The AI world is absolutely shaking. China just released their own version of ChatGPT and it has more downloads than ChatGPT. It's number one at the moment in the App Store, which is absolutely insane. It's literally just been released a few days ago. It is an open source platform, which means there's no limits. You can go inside, take a look at what they've done, um, look at the engineering. They spent a lot less on it as well. And they've done research on the performance between uh, ChatGPT and DeepSeek, which shows that DeepSeek outperforms ChatGPT uh, every single time. It's such a massive new uh, competitor for OpenAI, which there hasn't been thus far. And I wanted to have a bit of a play around because I thought, let me see what will work best for academics. Because of course, no one's gonna look at academics until an actual academic does. So I had a play around today and I wanted to show you guys um, some ways that you can use DeepSeek and my thoughts, just initial thoughts. I've only been using it for a couple of hours today, but initial thoughts on how to use it and kind of what which platform I think is better thus far, having used ChatGPT a lot. Um, but my husband, he does some programming and he was actually doing, he programmed in about five minutes um, something that we would could use on our website. So I've also seen people that do coding and programming use DeepSeek to create different uh, codes for them and create websites and all sorts so I can imagine that this is going to be such a game changer for the tech world but let me get into it straight away and see um, how it works and show you guys and feel free to let me know if you tried it out and your thoughts um, but it's completely free to you so you can go and try it out straight away. The first thing I did was I uploaded a PDF research paper and I asked it to summarize the research paper because I wanted to start from the basics I just wanted to see what quality um, of the output would be. And so far, I feel like it sounds a lot more, I don't wanna say a lot more human, but it sounds a lot cleaner and less robotic. And I like, this is hard to quantify um, because of course, this is just my feeling having used ChatGPT a lot. Um, I can kind of just tell even by the language, the the like punctuation that ChatGPT uses, I can tell that it's ChatGPT. But with this, there it looks like it could just be written by someone um, who has the academic skill to write like this. So I, I like the, the the quite the the easy way of explanation. I like how easy the explanation is, how clean it is, how clear it is, and this conclusion is also some future direction too. The next thing I said was, what is the gap in literature? So I wanted to see whether it could really read into the text and how much how much depth it can go into and this is a lot better than when I did this with ChatGPT and maybe in, in the next video let me know I can do a comparison between ChatGPT and DeepSeek like side by side but I kind of wanted to get this out ASAP which is why you're seeing me here today um, but essentially you can see that there's some answers here hit the key gaps two three four five six seven eight key gaps. And I like how it's given me a question every single time, which ChatGPT didn't do. Um, so you can see that there's questions, what are the roles, how can targeting affect um, the specific roles between these proteins in these specific pools. And this is essentially, if you think about it, these questions are essentially uh, research proposal worthy questions. Uh, so yeah, I feel like this is really, really powerful already. It gives you a summary too. Then I wanted to see whether it's going to hallucinate with references because one of the biggest problems with ChatGPT is that the references are fake and, you know, that's the big selling point or like the big unselling point. <laughs> the big negative when it comes to ChatGPT for academics is that the references are fake. So you don't trust anything it will say to you. Um, but here I asked five references about this topic and it gave me these five references with a link um, and the link goes directly to the publisher um, and the paper is there also for you to see and it is related to the topic. So like I said, I haven't played around with it a ton. Um, if I, I don't know if I would give it longer pieces of text if it would give me, if it would hallucinate, but so far, based off of this and what I've seen and what I've read, this doesn't seem to be the case. Um, it, it is a lot more powerful in terms of knowledge and access. Um, then I've asked about the literature that I've uploaded. Can you give me five related papers? Again, just trying to pull out the whole fake referencing thing and see if it would give me every, anything that's fake. And every single time, it always gives me a link. So that's a good sign. Um, then I've asked for an essay outline. And straight away, what happened was it said that is high traffic. Uh, you know, I think America woke up at this time. So people started like checking it out. 
I did it again and I prefer this essay outline again to ChatGPT's one because I feel like it just is a lot more um, a lot more niche and it just feels a lot more academic. There's background, there's introduction, then there's a thesis statement. If I were to input this into ChatGPT, you tend not to see the thesis statement or you tend to kind of miss out on some key uh, structural aspects of writing an essay. Then there's a second part here and then I ask for critical discussion points and it's given me some critique. Um, which I think is really useful. And then it concluded it for me with references, which are also all true references as well. Um, then I use this setting here, which is the deep think. So you can turn this on or off. And what it does is it's like a setting that allows you to, uh, allows you to use the platform to think about issues that are really, that require reasoning. Um, and, you know, that was one of the main issues to ChatGPT that it doesn't, it can't reason, it's not human. But apparently this can, and I feel like it's actually a bit scary how much it can. So I've asked if, how realistic is it that we're going to find a cure for cancer in our lifetime? And it's given a bit of a, a it's thought about it a bit and said, hmm, first I need to define what it's, what they mean by cure. So this, by the way, the, this gray bit here is it's thinking. So first let's define what cure means. Then we might think about a realistic looking for hope, but also maybe a realistic perspective. So it's thinking maybe she's looking for the right, maybe she's looking for a yes answer, but then also maybe she's looking for the realistic perspective. So I should really balance optimism with the complexity. So it's thinking like a human, like imagine you were to ask me, is there a cure for cancer? And I turn around and say, no, that's really harsh, right? But this is thinking, let me give this person the positive and say maybe, but also be realistic. So it's being empathetic, which is crazy. Um, yeah, and then anyway, it's giving me some more thoughts. So you can, you can hear, you can read the thoughts process, which is insane. Um, then it said, basically, essentially what it said is that What's the definition of cure? Is it complete eradication or is it turning it into a manageable disease like HIV? You, there's no issue with HIV because you can manage it now. Um, so would you consider that a cure, essentially? So it's really thought a lot deeper than I thought. <laughs> I thought I would just say yes or no. Um, so yeah, so I, I, this is really interesting, I think. And it's got references there as well. And then I wanted to see how good it would um, deal with... Uh, creating a table and I've said give me a table top 10 papers again I'm really interrogating the whole research paper thing because I think that's one of the main negatives when it comes to ChatGPT is that um, it then you can't trust the sources so if you can't trust the sources as an academic you can't really use it uh, so again I've given it, you can see it's thought it thought for 13 so for 16 seconds for this one it gathered papers uh, for each one, it did this, so you can see what the method is. So this would be useful if you're going to use it for like your methods for a research paper or something. Um, made sure that the papers are from reputable journals um, and gave a structure, etc. Which is really interesting. Um, and then this is the table. This table, which which is useful. I've asked for the research aims, the methods, key results, conclusion, future work limitations, and it's given me the summary for ten papers for every single one, which I think is really cool. Um, and the future directions. Then I wanted to delve even deeper, but the problem was that people woke up. <laughs> I'm lucky that I live inside of the world where I wake up like first, amongst the first in Asia. Um, but now Europe and the US woke up, so it stopped working, it broke. <laughs> um, I put a screenshot of a, it probably won't open up, but I put a screenshot of um, an image from a paper. Oh, maybe it's, oh yeah, there you go. I put this screenshot and I said, can you tell me what this image is? Because if it can do that, that's really powerful. Uh, and it just, deep seek, high traffic, try again, high traffic. I, I really tried. I'm going to try again at, at another point. Uh, but yeah, it just basically gave up. And this is exactly what happened when ChatGPT came out for the first time as well. I remember using it for the first couple of weeks and just getting this message every single time. So um, I was lucky that I was able to try it out in the morning and get lots of good initial feedback. The depth of knowledge and its precision is a lot better than what I see in ChatGPT. It feels a lot more natural. It feels like it has a bit more of an academic background and I like I said I know it's hard to quantify this and say but maybe a side-by-side -side example would be useful to see the difference but from ChatGPT the knowledge that it has is quite generalized and um, not really academic specific or not really subject specific but I am feeling like using this and seeing how 
um, the un what the understanding is like, it's giving me a much more nuanced response, a much more like deep response, especially with the whole like reasoning thing um, and the deep thinking aspect of it. It's quite scary, but it's like the potential for how it could reason and give you responses for maybe emails or like if you're working in healthcare, it can actually think like a human can. And I also feel like it can really deal with specialized knowledge a lot better. And I was reading this on Twitter, actually, and someone said um, that they have like something called a multi-token system. And essentially normal AI, like ChatGPT, reads each word one by one. So it would say if, if the word was, for example, if the sentence was the cat sat, it would read the, then it reads cat, then it reads sat. Um, but this is saying that DeepSeek reads in whole phrases at once. So that means it reads two times faster and is 90% as accurate. So when you're processing like billions of words, this really matters. If you're able to read the cat sat in one go as opposed to the cat sat can you imagine how much faster your response will be and just how much more how much more efficient it will be at processing um so that's really interesting and I, let's see how that kind of pans out but yeah I really enjoyed trying this out um I find it really fun to try out new platforms and I feel like I got kind of bored of the same ones that I've been using again and again there's nothing really exciting but this is something new and it's all over everywhere um, and I hope that we can see something amazing come out of it and new apps and new tools and new capabilities that are possible. AI is not going anywhere. I keep saying this. You can use it ethically. You can use it in a way that's allowed. You can use it in a way that allows you to be more efficient and productive. Um, and I think that's hopefully where this is going to be going in the next couple of years. But yeah, let me know if you try it out. Uh, it's called DeepSeek, free to use, open access. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye.